fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early days of the western United States. His strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, made him the greatest champion of justice the frontier ever knew. It was he, more than any other man, who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Ranger was riding along the trail east of Lost Creek when he suddenly drew back on Silver's reins. Oh, Silver, oh boy. Oh. Isn't that horse over there saddled, old fellow? He is. Where's his master? What would a saddle horse be doing out here alone? So, all right, I think we'd better have a look. If he's a stray, we'll pick him up. Come, boy. Come on. <laughs> the horse that had caught the masked man's attention had been grazing. Now, at the sound of Silver's approach, he raised his head. He showed no fear, however, and although the masked man had loosened the rope hanging from the pommel of his saddle, he found no occasion to use it. Oh, hold this, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Here, boy. Where are you from? Who do you belong to? <laughs> Don't be afraid, old fellow. We'll not harm you. Now, stand still, boy. Help. I'll... What's that? I'm a stranger. Over here, this way. Stay there, Silver. Where are you? Yeah. Over here by these rocks. There you are. The rocks hid you. Oh. And don't try to move, fellow. Oh. Just lean back. Oh. Oh. Well, that's better. Want water? No, not just yet. What happened? Fool guy who's seen a rattler and pitched me. It landed here. Oh. It's oh, but my back's busted. I can't seem to move. Oh. And one moment. There. Did that hurt you? Good. Then your back's all right. Now, how about that arm? I know my arm's busted. Oh. It is. You've had a bad fall. Pretty badly bruised up, aren't you? Yeah. I look, stranger. It's almost 30 miles to Lost Creek from here and not a ranch house between. I could take you into town, but I don't like to risk it. You may be injured internally. Now, if you're willing, I can do better for you. My camp is only about two miles away. I can take you there on silver and lead your horse. Trip won't be easy, but I'll make you as comfortable as I can. I, I can't stay here. Of course not. And back at camp, I have an Indian friend. Who can do you more good than any doctor in the territory. He'll look after you until you're well and ask no questions. And if you're wondering about this mask... Huh? If you are, don't worry. I'm not an outlaw. The law's not hunting me. You'll get in no trouble. Oh, thanks, stranger. 
You're all right. Ready to try it? Oh, wait. Yes? Friend, w- would you do a fellow a favor? Certainly. Oh, I hate like the Dickens to ask, but, but I ain't got no choice. I oughtn't to mention it, but it's important. It, it's something that has to be done. Then it will be done. Huh? But, but I ain't even told you what it is yet. I think you're honest, and I know you wouldn't ask me anything impossible. You're in trouble, and you need help. And you have my word, I'll do what you ask. It's about some cash. Yes? Reach, reach inside my vest here. you find a letter in my shirt pocket. Right. Oh. Well, this it? Yeah. And what about it? Well, there's cash in it. A whole lot of cash. And you're trusting me with it? <laughs> what good would it do me not to? Uh-huh, I'm trusting you. Uh, that has to be took to a certain place and mailed to a certain fella. Maybe you won't mail it and... Well, maybe you'll keep it for yourself, but that's a chance I, I have to take. It ain't risking so much, you could have robbed me anyhow. Mail it to the person addressed on this envelope? Yeah. yeah read it aloud. It's addressed to Jake Sanders. At... Well, this is addressed to Lost Creek. Uh-huh. But your trail le- leads away from Lost Creek. Where did you want this mailed? Uh, at Homestead. Homestead? Do you realize how far away that is? It's a right fur piece. A good two weeks' journey. Yeah. You don't have to go if you don't want to, stranger. I can't make you. I just hope that maybe... You misunderstood me. I'll mail this from whatever point you ask. But don't you think this is rather strange? You just came from Lost Creek, didn't you? Not from far away. This letter and money is going to a man there. But instead of mailing it in town or giving it to him in person, you set out on a trip of several hundred miles. Well, I... I... Now, wait. Get this straight. You don't have to explain if you'd rather not. But if you feel you can... Well, I'm sorry, mister, but I can't. And just one question, then. Hmm? Are you sending this money to Jake Sanders, addressed here? Or are you acting for someone else? Oh, I can't answer that either. You're a cowhand? Uh-huh. And you say this envelope contains quite a lot of money? Yeah. Then you've answered my question after all. Unless you've had a stroke of luck, you're acting for someone else. I've yet to see the cowhand with much money to spare a week after payday. Oh, mister, you won't, you won't go talking about this, will you? No, friend, I won't. Oh. Thanks. If you did, there'd be the dickens to pay. I'll make just one reservation to that promise. Hmm? I'll keep silence as long as no one's hurt by it. Oh, well, that's all right. I give you my word, mister. You won't be hurting nobody. You'll be doing a right big favor. Well, that's subtle. Ready to travel? Ready as I live, will be. Then let's get started. Here, Silver. Come on, old boy. <laughs> Lone Ranger moved the injured cowboy to his camp, left him there in charge of Tonto, then set out for the distant town of Homestead, as he had promised. His errand performed, however, and his curiosity aroused by the fact that a man would travel several hundred miles to mail money addressed to the place he had left, the Lone Ranger returned to Lost Creek. There he found old Jake Sanders, and one evening, carefully disguised, he leaned against the bar of the Lost Creek Cafe and watched Jake... He argued with Amos Buckner, a rancher as elderly as Jake himself. Doggone you, Amos. I thought I warned you last time we met to keep out of my way. Just tell them, Jake. Uh, <laughs> you warned me. Wait. Well, you dried up stove in, old four flusher. You never had that much nerve. It was me warned you. Now get out of this cafe. Warn, vamos, and leave me be. Air ain't fit to breathe with a polecat like you. Uh, you call me a polecat, sir, <laughs> you skunk. You heard me. That's fight and talk. Reach for your irons. Go on, reach. <laughs> Doggone, Jake. You don't change none at all, do you? What's that? <laughs> You're just as big a four flush as you ever was. You think I'm bluffing? I'll show you. Just draw. That's all I'm asking. Just go ahead and draw and see if I'm bluffing. I'll blast you right out of them fancy boots you wear. <laughs> you know I ain't armed. <laughs> <laughs> And you're noted for 40 years. I don't ever carry guns. Don't believe in it. Nobody has to tell you that. Well, I I was just forgetting. You mean you knew you could bluff without being called. You're lying. (laughs) Don't go to laughing, either. (laughs) One of these days, you're going to laugh out of the other side of your big mouth. I've heard that for 40 years, too. This time, I mean it. (laughs) And one of these days, you're going to find it out. Only then, it'll be too late. Uh, Jake, you're getting tiresome. You better run along. That's just what I'm going to do. Lots of wood. But it ain't for the reason you're thinking. <laughs> the stage just got in a little while back. You recollect what I told you this time last week? <laughs> Jake, you talk so much if I was to try remembering everything you said. Uh, 
Go clean daft. I told you I was just waiting for my boy Jim to send me more cash. Oh, sure. I guess you did mention something like that. Well, what about it? Well, if that cash comes on the stage tonight, you watch out, that's all. Just you watch out. What for? <laughs> and God tell, I ain't no such fool. But you'll be finding out. <laughs> Amos, you'll find out a plenty. Night, fellas. Uh, if that crook gets to acting up, just call me. I'll handle him for you. Glad oh, to do it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Barkeep. Hey? I want something, stranger? I just heard the quarrel. What's the trouble between those two men? Trouble? <laughs> I guess you're a stranger in these parts. Chucks, Jake and Amos have been fighting like that since before any of the rest of us can remember. Jake's all the time threatening Amos. And Amos always gets him madder by just laughing at him. Amos? Amos Buckner. you got a place south of town. If you rode in by the South Trail, you must have seen it. Finest set of buildings anywhere in the county. Better off than Jake, then, eh? Oh, Jake's just about bust. If it wasn't for the cash he gets every so often from that boy of his, reckon he'd almost starve to death. He lives in a little place right right here in town. Yes, I know. Well, if you'll excuse uh, me... One I... moment. Yeah? It's none of my business, but I'm curious. You said Jake has a son who sends him money. Any harm in my asking where Jake's son is and what he does for a living? Don't see why. Jim's got a job at the ranch up north, the way I've heard it. No? Oh. But once in a while, he's sent along with a trail herd and... Gets as close to here as Homestead, way over north. Then he takes what he's saved and mails it to his pa. Mighty fine young fella, don't you think? Ain't many boys that'd do as much. No. You seen Jim recently? Oh, gosh, no. Not for the past ten years. Even Jake ain't. Jake's too old to travel much. And I guess the boy never has time to get this far. No, it's been quite a spell since anybody's seen Jim in these parts. While we're talking... How well do you know the brands in this section? How well? I know them all. Good. About four weeks ago, I met a cowboy with a horse bearing a brand I didn't recognize. I wondered about it. What was it? A box B. Yeah? Why, that's Amos Buckner's brand. It is? Sure. The man just now quarreling with Jake? Mm -hmm. That's the one. You're sure? Of course I'm sure, but what do you... Excuse me. Hey! <laughs> I've always known that most of the folks in town was local. But I reckon there's strangers suffering from the same complaint. Old Jake Sanders called at the post office, which had remained open for the stage, then hurried home. An hour later, a man sat on a horse in front of the cottage while Jake gave him certain instructions. Steve, here's my boy's money. It, it's come. Now, you put it where you know it'll be safe. Sure, Jake. And don't you waste no time getting to Edgewood. Hurry, and you can make it in five, six days. I'll make it in less than that. You know the fellow you're to see? Name's Barton, ain't it? Uh-huh. Government man. What if he says he'll have to get in touch with Amos first? You tell him he don't have to do no such thing. I know my rights. I know Amos ain't bothered to take out another lease on that government graze. The old fool thinks nobody else wants it, eh? Well, I'll show him. Steve, I've been waiting this chance for the past 40 years. You give Barton that cash and tell him I want a lease for a year. He can't turn you down. He can't put you off. It ain't legal. You see to it he makes out the papers right then and there. Well, if he has to, I'll see to it he does. <laughs> Just wait till you see that old fool's face when I tell him to get his quitters off my lease land. <laughs> He'll be fit to bust. Well, then what'll you do with it? Uh, you keep it a secret, Steve? Uh-huh. Steve, I'm going to rent it out for sheep. Yeah? <laughs> and if that don't fix Amos, well, then nothing will. All right, Steve, you know what to do. I better get going. I'll be back as quick as I can. Right. Get up, boy. Come on. Get up there. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited 40 years to show Amos who's the smartest. But doggone if it ain't worth it. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. That same evening, Amos Buckner returned to his ranch house and laughed as he told his wife of his meeting with his old enemy. <laughs> Bet I, I wish you could have been there. You'd have laughed your head off a of chick. <laughs> Unless he gets so mad sometimes, you think he's going to shake himself to pieces. He threatened you again? <laughs> sure, just like he always does. Amos, haven't you thought that maybe someday he'd keep one of those threats? Uh, Jake? <laughs> I bet you're talking through your hat. I might. Oh, shucks, not him. He just enjoys hearing himself. Reckon getting mad at me is about all the fun the poor old fella has. <laughs> well, I say, let him have his fun. He ain't harm nobody. Well, Amos, I just hope someday you're not sorry for it. Oh, yes. Uh Huh? I wanted to ask you, have you done anything about the lease yet? You know, our old one's lapsed. Gosh, honey, I plumb forget it again. You better have it renewed. Uh Uh-huh, I will. But in no great hurry. You wouldn't say that if somebody else were after that range. Maybe I wouldn't. (laughs) But they ain't. I'll bet most of the folks around here just about figure I own that land. I've leased it from the government so long. I bet it never occurred to them they could lease it. But if someone else did? Oh, gosh, Beth, don't, don't you even think of it. Right? Golly, I don't know what I'd do. Well, that's what I mean. The range I own outright wouldn't come near giving us enough graze. Well, then you better not take any more chances. You better see to it right away. Mm, I guess so. I hadn't thought of it just like that before. I'll send somebody out first thing tomorrow. I can't get away myself. Well, I'll remind you. Yeah, I wish you would. And then maybe... Who's that? I don't know. Come in. Oh. Well, Mass, what do you do? Don't call us. You can't oh, do it. Oh, Amos, don't hear you. Stand back, Amos. You, you can't rob us. I don't intend to. Then get out. Not until I get certain facts. Huh? Amos, you've been sending money to Jake Sanders, letting him think that money came from his son. Oh. Well, well, what'd you say? You heard me, Amos. I don't know your motive or when this started. But in spite of the fact he considers himself your enemy, Jake is dependent on you for his living. <laughs> you're crazy. You're, you're loco. You, you don't know what you're saying. Don't I? I never heard such foolishness. Hear what he said, Biz? <laughs> well, you hear him say I was sending money to Jake? Well, ain't that crazy? Why did you deny a... it? Well, it you... just ain't true. Why shouldn't I? Well, well. Wait, uh, where, uh, where did you get such notes? If it's not true, Amos, forget about it. The man must have misrepresented himself. In that case, he'll get the punishment he deserves. Now, now, now hold on, stranger. Who's this? Uh, what man you talking about? Just a fellow I met several weeks ago. He's riding a horse wearing your brand, so I thought there must be something to his story. As long as there's not, why, of course, he'll go to jail. What for? Oh, the law picked him up. He was on a wanted poster. Tried to deny his identity, that's all. He gave the law a story about working for you and being sent on an errand to Homestead. But you've denied sending money to Jake, so in that case... Now, wait. Uh, come on back inside. Yes? Close the door. What's this all about? Bears? Yes, Amos. Bears, I'll have to tell him. If Clay's in trouble... And of course you must. Tell me what? Uh, look, mister, I don't know who you are or what connection the masked man could have with the law, but but if Clay's been arrested, it's all a mistake. He, he ain't no crook. He, he does work for me. And you have been sending money to Jake? Mm, yeah. Why? Well, it, it ain't easy to make it clear to a stranger. Go on. I may understand. Well, well doggone it all, it's like this. You can believe it or not, I don't care. Uh, me and Jake both came to this section about the same time. Ain't anybody still alive that was here when we first came. Yes? We fought and argued right from the first, but we never really meant nothing by it. It, well, it was just our way. Then back a few years, Jake's health got bad and he had to sell out. He moved to town and it weren't no time at all till his money was near gone. It looked like he'd have to pull stakes and clear out. I see. Only just about the same time, just by accident, I happened to hear about a young fella getting killed in a stampede over north. With Jim, Jake's son. Only I was the only one who knew it. So, uh, so I seen where I could send Jake the cash he'd have to have to live on without his ever suspecting where it came from. And right now, Jake doesn't know his boy is dead? No. And you've never made any effort to let Jake know what he owed you? Oh, I couldn't do that. And I couldn't let the old fella leave town, could I? <laughs> Shucks, I, I sort of enjoyed having him mad at me. Without him calling me names and threatening me every time we met up, well, well things just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> It'd kind of be like sitting down to a table where there weren't no salt. <laughs> Would be no real taste to anything. Uh, stranger, Amos only did it because he felt sorry for Jake. 
You shouldn't blame him. I don't. No? Amos, not many men would have been as unselfish as you've been. And you won't tell it. The time's come when it'll have to be told. Oh, but it don't... One moment. I have a confession to make first. Huh? I did meet the man you sent to Homestead. But he's not in trouble with the law, as I let you believe. He's at my camp. He was seriously injured, and Tonto's looking after him. Uh, Tonto? An Indian friend of mine. Oh. Amos, I had to convince you that your man was in trouble in order to make you confess the truth. But Clay's hurt, you say? He was, but now he's almost well. He'll soon return. Well, then I'd better go There's see... no time to discuss that now. Amos, where was Jim Sanders killed? Over in Amiga County. But there's no one other than yourself who knows of his death, you say? Well, Clay does, of course. He had to know because I used him to send the money from Homestead. And then... Uh, yes? Well, the sheriff of Omega County knows about it, too. I had to tell him so as he wouldn't go making inquiries and spoiling things. So, hey, you leaving? Amos, Jake's going to make trouble for you. And without realizing it, you've given him the money with which to do it. Huh? I'll explain later. But where are you going? To Omega County. Adios. Old boy, we're riding, and there's no time to lose. Come on, old fella. Come on, boy. Hurry. The journey to Omega County was a long one. And in the meantime, old Jake Sanders' messenger had made a swift trip to Edgewood. His business there was soon transacted. And in less than two weeks after his departure, he drew rein once more before Jake's cottage. Whoa, whoa there, fellow. Whoa, whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa. Jake! Hi, Jake, where are you? Jake! Hi, Jake! You, you get it? Did I? <laughs> Jake, just look at here. Let me have that. It's mine. I got the lease. Steve, you got plenty of bullets for them guns of yourn? Eh? Huh? Why? <laughs> We're calling on Amos. Yeah? I'm showing him this lease and ordering him to get his cows off my land right now. Golly. And if there ain't trouble, then I'm a siwash. Come on, Steve, help me saddle up. I want to get there. <laughs> Even as Jake and Steve rode toward Amos Buckner's ranch house, the masked man was on the last leg of his return journey from Amiga County. He shouted encouragement to his great horse, Silver. Come on, old fellow. Hurry, boy. Hurry, Silver. It's not far now, old fellow. Hurry, old Silver. Away. <laughs> Old Jake and Steve drew their horses to a stop in front of the Buckner Ranch House. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Steve. Keep your guns hanging free. <laughs> this is going to be good. He's going to be mad, all right. But don't let him bluff you, Steve. You're working for me now, and the law's on my side. Yeah, I'll see. Hey, what are you fellas doing on my place? Oh, seen us coming, eh? I'm back on them horses of yours and make tracks out of here. <laughs> I reckon not. You better do we what I... we got business with you. Ain't that so, Steve? Sure is, Jake. So you'd better let us in to talk, Amos, or maybe it'll go mighty bad with you. Mm, come in. <laughs> Don't pay no attention to them, Bess. They'll be leaving again right soon. Oh, hello. Howdy, oh, ma'am. We'll be leaving real quick, eh? Well, Amos, you listen to this. We ain't leaving till we know just how soon you're going to get your cattle off my land. What? What's that you said? <laughs> Fetched you, huh? Well, look this over. Amos, what does he mean? Uh, just a second, honey. I... Wait, well, this is a lease. Uh-huh. To the government land I've been using. Sure. You put off getting another lease, so I stepped in ahead of you. <laughs> Smart of me, weren't it? Now, you can give orders to your men to round up your critters and clear them out. I'm going to rent out that range to some sheepmen and all. You are not... And you needn't say what you're thinking, Amos, because it won't do you no good. You can't get away with this. I reckon I can. It's legal. I won't move one single critter. All right, then, don't. No matter to me. I'll either get the sheriff to do it for you, or... Or what? <laughs> or charge you double rent for the grazing. And you'll have to pay it, too. 
Maybe damages besides. You low down. Now, now, don't get all head up, Amos. Won't help you none. Uh, Mask me. Jake, you'll do nothing until you've read this. I'll hail him, Jake. Oh, oh, hey, stay out of this. You're not hurt. Jake, take this paper and read it. Well, what is it? Find out for yourself. Stranger. Yes? Is this what you tried to warn me about a couple of weeks back? Did you know then that Jake was planning to lease the land I'd always use? I did. Then why didn't you tell me? In the first place, it would have done no good. Jake's man had a head start on you. You couldn't have caught him in time. I could have, but I had a more important errand. In Amiga County? Yes. But, but what'd you do there? I saw the sheriff, Amos, and got a signed statement from him that what you told me was true. Dead. My boy, dead. You had to learn it sometime, Jake. Amos, you knew about it, but never let me know. Now, look, Jake. He didn't let you know because he was sending you the money that was being mailed to you from Homestead, Jake. And you had to think it was from your boy, or you wouldn't have taken it. What? What's that? Is that so, Amos? Is it? Have you been sending me that money? Yes, Jake. You done that, and all the time I was hating you. I was hating you because we both started even, but you was rich and... I was poor. I figured you looked down on me. <laughs> oh, shucks, Jake. That was a fool way to think. But I did. Oh, forget it. And I was going to make you go bust with your own money. And still can if you wish, Jake. Hey, Jake, stop. You're tearing up that lease. Ain't it mine? Can I do what I want with it? But it was worth money to you. Whatever it was. You could have made me pay plenty to get it back. You think you're the only one to do any favors, you old idiot? Who you call an idiot? You come over here. No, no Ranger. To me now. Ranger, stop and they're fighting again. Mrs. Buckner, I have an idea they'll always fight. Only don't worry. Now they're fighting not as enemies, but as friends. Wait, come back. All right, Silver. Back to Tallow and Camp, old boy. Here. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.